The world of Charles II was a captivating and often chilling one. We're about to delve into the depths of this enigmatic monarch's existence, and trust me, you won't believe what we uncover. To understand Charles II, let's start by exploring the origins of his dynasty, the Habsburgs. The Habsburgs rose to prominence in the 15th century and established a power base in Spain. A family known for their lust for power inadvertently transformed themselves into a living genetic experiment due to their obsession with intermarriage within the family, which had unintended consequences. Brace yourselves, history enthusiasts, for the jaw-dropping truth. The Habsburgs, the royal bloodline from which Charles II descended, had a disturbing affinity for keeping it all in the family. All of it. They intermarried with such fervor that they practically turned their family tree into a twisted pretzel. They were the masters of maintaining blood purity. They took keeping it in the family to a whole new level, marrying their own cousins, nieces, and even siblings. If there was an award for the most incestuous family tree, they would have won it hands down. This practice of inbreeding eventually caught up with them, and Charles II became a prime example of the devastating effects it could have. In fact, Charles II was the living embodiment of their genetic legacy. Born on November 6, 1661, in Madrid, Spain, Charles II's genetic fate was sealed before he drew his first breath. Charles II's family tree was more like a twisted maze, where relatives doubled as both spouses and cousins. It's no wonder his gene pool resembled a shallow puddle. Charles unfortunately bore the brunt of their genetic recklessness. His medical conditions were numerous and severe. His physical health suffered greatly due to generations of inbreeding. In addition to physical disabilities, Charles II also experienced intellectual disabilities. He had a limited understanding of complex matters and often relied heavily on advisors and courtiers for decision-making. Think about it. The Habsburgs were like the ultimate collector of genetic defects. They amassed an astonishing array of health issues that plagued their bloodline for generations. Charles II's had a severe speech impediment, which made it difficult for him to communicate effectively. This added to the perception of his frailty and incompetence as a ruler, and his infertility became a matter of great concern for the Habsburg dynasty. Despite being married twice, he failed to produce an heir, furthering fuel anxieties about the future of the Spanish line. Charles II was a living testament to the consequences of playing genetic roulette with close relatives. His body was a carnival of malformations, a warning on what happens when you keep it in the family for too long. To say that Charles II had his fair share of medical problems would be the understatement of the century. Due to his extensive list of ailments, Charles II was often referred to as the Bewitched or El Hechizado in Spanish, highlighting the belief that his physical and mental afflictions were the result of supernatural forces. As a result of his genetic abnormalities, physical deformities, intellectual disabilities, Charles II had a significantly shortened life expectancy. He survived to the age of 38, which was considered remarkable given his health conditions and his real-life carnival of medical marvels. Charles II's death sparked rumors and speculation about the cause. Some believed he was poisoned while others attributed his demise to divine intervention, linking it to the perceived sins of his family. But the physician who conducted Charles II's autopsy provided a detailed account of his conditions. It was a laundry list of ailments that would make any physician's head spin and even the bravest physician run for the hills. The autopsy report read like a medical horror story, Charles II's body was a smorgasbord of deformities and disorders. It was like a twisted game of mad libs gone wrong. As Charles II ascended to the throne in 1665, he inherited a vast Spanish empire, which encompassed territories in Europe, the Americas, and Asia. But his reign was plagued by decline and a loss of power. Charles II inherited an empire on the brink of collapse, 
much like his own genetic makeup. It was a cruel twist of fate, where the Empire and the King seemed to mirror each other's decline. The common people saw Charles II as a tragic figure, a king whose physical and mental struggles symbolized the decline of the Empire. They looked at Charles II and saw a living embodiment of their fading hopes and dreams. His struggles became a symbol of the Empire's own downward spiral, coinciding with a decline in the Spanish economy. Years of war, mismanagement and corruption took a toll on the Empire's finances, contributing to its weakened state. The nobility, on the other hand, struggled to maintain their influence in a crumbling empire. They found themselves entangled in a power struggle, scrambling to secure their grip on power as the empire crumbled, like characters in a Shakespearean tragedy. Eventually, Charles II's health deteriorated beyond repair. On November 1, 1700, in Madrid, he took his last breath. News of his passing spread, igniting a fierce struggle for control over the Spanish Empire, triggering the War of Spanish Succession. When Charles II took his final bow, the stage was set for a grand drama. The European powers saw an opportunity and they lunged at it, ready to tear the Empire apart, starting a battle for power and control with nations vying for a piece of the fading Spanish Empire. The war erupted in 1701, with two main contenders vying for the Spanish throne, the Bourbon dynasty backed by France and the Habsburg dynasty supported by various European allies. It was a clash of titans, the Bourbons versus the Habsburgs, battling for supremacy. But it was also a conflict that dragged other nations into the fray, each with their own ambitions and aspirations. The war brought devastation and upheaval to the Spanish Empire, as armies clashed on land and sea and territories were fiercely contested. The consequences of this war were far-reaching, shaping the course of history. Spain became the battlefield for European powers, including France, Austria, England and the Dutch Republic, making it a truly international conflict. It was a chaotic and brutal period, where the common people suffered the consequences of royal ambitions. The war not only reshaped the political map of Europe, but also had profound consequences for the balance of power globally. It marked a shift in dominance from Spain to emerging colonial powers like Britain and France. The War of Spanish Succession was like a royal soap opera on steroids. Countries formed alliances, betrayed each other, and fought tooth and nail for a share of the crumbling empire. It was a power struggle for the ages. Finally, in 1714, the Treaty of Utrecht was signed, bringing an end to the War of Spanish Succession and changing the balance of power in Europe. The Treaty of Utrecht was like a grand jigsaw puzzle, with nations maneuvering to secure their interests and carve out their share of the spoils. It was a game of give and take, alliances and compromises. The treaty recognized Philip V, a Bourbon, as the King of Spain, marking the ascendance of the Bourbon dynasty. However, it came at a cost for Spain, as it lost several territories to other European powers. Spain had to give up significant chunks of its empire. The British gained Gibraltar and the island of Menorca, while the Austrians secured the Spanish Netherlands. It was a redistribution of power, leaving Spain diminished. The aftermath of the war had long-lasting effects on Spain's position in the world. The loss of territories weakened the empire, and its once unrivaled dominance began to fade. Spain, once a dominant global power, now found itself weakened and overshadowed by others. The War of Spanish Succession had dealt a severe blow to Spain's global standing. Its colonies faced challenges, and other nations seized the opportunity to expand their own empires. Spain's decline marked the end of an era. It shattered the illusion of Spanish invincibility and paved the way for new players on the global stage. However, the war also brought some positive changes. The Treaty of Utrecht established a balance of power in Europe and ushered in a period of relative stability after years of conflict, and it laid the groundwork for a new era one of diplomatic negotiations and a more cautious approach to conflicts. It was an attempt to maintain a delicate equilibrium in Europe. 
Spain, bruised but not defeated, found solace in its remaining territories. It redirected its attention to the Americas, where it still held significant influence. The empire began to redefine itself in a rapidly evolving world since the aftermath left a profound impact on Spain's history and identity. It forced the nation to confront its weaknesses and adapt to new realities. Charles II's death and the subsequent war not only marked the decline of the Spanish Empire, but also highlighted the dangers of unchecked power and inbreeding within ruling dynasties. The Spanish Empire, however, once a mighty force that spanned continents, crumbled like a stale churro. Charles II's tragic life and the chaos that followed were a grim reminder of the consequences of genetic isolation and the often associated perils of dynastic ambitions. It serves as a cautionary tale, etching its mark on history.